Good morning, apes. Hope everybody is doing phenomenally well here this morning, but you're probably not if you saw yesterday's inflation report. We got the latest data on wholesale prices, and just like consumer prices, they are back on an uptrend, so hard to have a good day after seeing something like that, but hey, hope everything else is going well with you. For me personally, it definitely is not. Let me show you guys something here. Look at this thing. So I bought this little stand as something to like hold my phone with while I make these videos instead of the books and boxes that I have it stacked on right now. And look at this, it comes with this sick little arm to put it in position, but they didn't give me the damn phone holder. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, I already reordered another one, but let me know if anybody out there is smarter than me and if I just can't figure out how to use it. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into the market movements for the day. Guys, we are coming at you with a little bit of a different format here today. It is currently 7.22pm on this beautiful Thursday, March 14th. Happy Pi Day everybody as well, it's 314 and we are making this video in the evening. I just finished writing the peel for tomorrow, so it's going to be hitting your inbox at the usual 6.30 a.m. time. Not that you care, it's going to be way before you wake up regardless, I'm sure. But we wanted to try out this little bit of a different format to just spread the good word as early as we possibly could. So let's go ahead and dive right in. First and foremost, it was not a very good day for the WSO Alpha portfolio. We had Dollar General, one of our key positions, taking a big hit following a top earnings report. We talk about that a little bit later on in the report, so I'm not going to step on too much content right now. Overall, the portfolio is down about 59 basis points on the day, bringing the year-to-date return down to 8.14%. That does mean we are now underperforming the indexes on the year once again. We are in an absolute battle for our lives right now, guys. I mean, I'm sure we're going to be absolutely destroying the index like it doesn't even exist by the time summer rolls around. That's just our typical MO, but, you know, we want to keep everybody on our toes for the time being. We still have that Tesla report coming up soon for the Alpha portfolio as well, so stay tuned for that. We are finishing up the model right now. Had some difficulties with the revenue projection, but trust me, guys, you are not going to want to miss this one. It's quite the bold call, so uh, I, I, I assume there's going to be a lot of smoke thrown my way, and I can't wait to see it. Now, we did see a relatively weak performance from the indices on the day as well. All of them were lower for the day with the Nasdaq losing 30 bips, the S&P down 29 bips, the Russell getting absolutely hammered down 1.79%, so very tough scene on the day, but luckily we did see some relatively strong, kind of strong performance from Bitcoin and the other crypto assets. Now in the past 24 hours, my screen is telling me they're down about 2 and 2.9% for Bitcoin and Ethereum respectively. But over the last hour or so, they are starting to pick back up. We're still over 70000 for Bitcoin, but ETH has fallen back below that $4,000 mark. Take that as you will. We're keeping the exposure in WSO Alpha. We're actually shifting out of our current holding of GBTC into uh, something else. We're kind of trying to assess what exactly it's going to be because we got to balance liquidity with expense ratios of tracking error. So stay tuned for that to see which one we end up going with. All right, let's go ahead and move into some of the banana bits that are going to be coming out for you today. So first and foremost, 7% mortgage rates, according to the Wall Street Journal, we might just have to get used to it. I mean, if you're an asshole like me and you're looking to buy a house in 2024, you are absolutely screwed because we are going to get screwed with 7% interest rates. This is absolutely disgusting. I mean, clearly the biggest economic mistake that I've ever made was being born in 1999. I vehemently blame my parents for that, and I'm going to be calling them as soon as I finish making this video to tell them how much I hate them for making me be alive. Now, we also did see a big swing and a miss for Adobe's earnings reports, I'm sure. Their shareholders also wish this company wasn't alive because it's down more than 10% after hours so far. They got about 35 more minutes and after hours training remaining, so we'll see if they can kind of recover from that. But right now, it is looking very yucky. We're going to be coming out with a short video tomorrow going over the earnings report as well, so stay tuned for that. All right, SpaceX's third Starship launch was yesterday as well. It was much better than some of the other ones. It actually went up a decent amount before exploding. And the best part is that it did explode as well, so definitely go ahead and check out that video because it's pretty hysterical. And finally, we got short interest on U.S. stocks as near record lows. That feeds into something we'll be talking about a little bit later on in terms of overall investor sentiment. Definitely stay tuned for the end to get our thoughts on the pathway forward for markets. All right, enough of that nonsense. Let's get into the big story of the day. We have PPI. No, I'm not trying to spell the last three letters of Mississippi. That is the Producer Price Index Report. Basically, we talked about the CPI earlier this week, the CPI being the Consumer Price Index. This is the wholesale price index so basically what they're doing is measuring intermediate costs that go into those final demand goods that then get sold to consumers so this is inflation at the wholesale or at the warehouse level it's basically underlying inflation that's leading into consumer inflation so this is often seen as a leading indicator overall that was the real scary part of this report because what we saw was wholesale prices increase 0.6 percent for the month and 1.6 percent for the year in terms of the headline both came in much harder than expected 
The monthly rate actually doubled expectations for 0.3%, whereas the annual was the highest that we've seen since September of last year. So that made markets a little bit scared on the day. But, you know, if we scroll down into the report a little bit, we realize that it's actually probably not as bad as we might think. So core PPI, this strips out food and energy costs along with trade services costs. I'm going to be honest with you guys, I didn't look into what that is, but it sounds like some bullshittery that somebody can let me know about. Now, that increased 0.4%, a downtick from January 0.6%, so moving in the right direction on a core basis. Meanwhile, core PPI annually rose 2.8%, moving back towards that holy grail level of 2.0. Now, the real problem in this report was final demand goods, and more specifically, it was energy, and even more specifically, it was gas prices. So, first and foremost, we saw monthly energy inflation rise 4.4%. That was the highest that we've seen since it looks like about August of last year when we hit that 8.9% level. Very much moving in the wrong direction because we were seeing energy deflation for quite a while. Now we're seeing it start to uptick. Don't come at me with the damn Joe Biden's economy stuff just yet. There's a lot of action going on in the Middle East. In case you didn't know, that's going to be altering oil prices. Now, markets still weren't very happy despite the fact that of that final demand goods portion of the PPI report, about 70% of the increase was energy like we said. And then of that, 33% alone was just from gasoline prices. Gas increased 6.8% for the month. Again, this is at the wholesale level. It's not what you're going to be seeing at the pump. But this is what's going into things like whatever machinery uses gasoline. I don't think planes use gasoline. I think they have their own fuel. But that's the only example that's coming to mind right now. So once again, somebody please correct me in the comments. All right. And then the PPI report, like we said, it's a leading indicator. It's considered one of those crystal balls of the economy that can give us some idea of where things might be heading. This is definitely not moving in the right direction, so it's given the market a little bit more of a reason to uh, be afraid. But if we take a step back and see what this means for the broader economy and the interest rate scenario that we're living through right now, we can take a look at j Powell and P. Vol. P. Vol, of course, being Paul Volcker. He was a Federal Reserve chairman starting in about 1979, all the way through to about 87, I believe. I probably should have looked that up before I said it. But he is indicative of the most important chart in financial markets right now. So what we're seeing here, if you go ahead and look at the actual report, we are seeing uh, basically the CPI overlaid with the CPI from 1974 to 1982. Obviously, we're talking about PPI in the report, but very similar. They, they have a very strong correlation. We are seeing that CPI is following a very similar trend as we did in the 70s and the early 80s when inflation ripped as high as 15% was the, around the peak. Now, what happened then was we ripped all the way up to about 11, 12, 13%, fell back down 4% within the next couple of years. That's between 1973 and 1976. But then from 76 up to 1980, we ripped from that 4% to 15%. That is exactly what Jerome Powell is trying to avoid. Now that we've gotten inflation down from that like 9% level to, you know, the much more chill like 3-4% territory, things are starting to look a lot better for us. But Jerome Powell, he continues to say this in his commentary, so it's good to know that he's at least cognizant of it. Because for most Fed shares, we're not sure if they're really cognizant of anything. For most elected officials, especially those in the Senate and the White House as well, we really don't think that they're cognizant of anything. But Jerome Powell is at least trying his best. So he's coming out here saying that we're well aware that if we start to loosen monetary policy a little bit too early, that could just trigger a reignition in inflation. Obviously, that's not something that anybody wants, and that's why this is the most important mark. This is the most important chart in markets right now because this shows the mistakes of the past that JPA was trying to avoid. Don't expect rates to be moving lower anytime soon. Now it's even looking like it might be pushed out past the July meeting. So you know, obviously, that's not great for financial markets and financial assets, but. It is a relatively good sign for the overall economy. If we're not cutting interest rates, that means that the economy is doing pretty well. There's no need to loosen up monetary policy because we're already firing on all cylinders. We start to loosen monetary policy when uh, things are getting a little bit too slow for our liking, and that's kind of a way to heat things back up. All right, moving on down into some of the stock movers of the day. We have Dick's Sporting Goods coming alive on the day. Dick's Actually, they had a very solid earnings report, and it's kind of indicative of what's going on in the U.S. markets right now. So we have a 15.47% rise in the stock on the day because those earnings were incredibly strong, and it's kind of indicative of what we're seeing between consumer spending right now. Dick Sporting Goods, they're known for being a premium retail outlet, so we're seeing that high-income earners are still able to spend very strongly without too much worry, but other names like Dollar General, Dollar Tree that we saw over the past couple of days, they have been suffering. That kind of shows the split between uh, consumer demand right now and consumer spending. Keep in mind, spending does drive 70% of the overall economy. Now, most of that, of course, is rich people, so that's definitely a good sign that Dix is doing well. But lower-income consumers are certainly starting to feel the pain. Then, of course, we have Build-A-Bear Workshop. I mean, this is an, always an interesting one to take a look at because 
it's really indicative of kind of kids in their consumer spending. Obviously, the kids aren't out here making the decisions, but it's how much they are able to force their parents to go and spend. We all know the kids are constantly trying to put their parents into bankruptcy. So seeing build bear rise 16.08% on the day. Going to have to go ahead and reorganize these so that we have the percentages in the right spot. But you guys know what I mean. They had a very strong quarter. Sales grew 3.9%. They beat estimates on the bottom line as well. And they also reinstated their dividend of about 20 cents per share. Very solid quarter if you are a teddy bear. Now, moving on to the absolute pieces of shit for the day. We have... Fisker. This thing, I honestly even feel bad making fun of it at this point. It was funny the entire way down, but yesterday, the Wall Street Journal came out with a report and basically said, yeah, that was the last nail in the coffin. They have hired advisors for restructuring their debts, basically a preliminary signal of going BK or going full Chapter 7, Chapter 11, whatever they may do. This EV stock has clearly lost all of its battery. All right, sorry for the cringy-ass joke right there, but we got Under Armour to go on to as well. Under Armour had a really piece-of-shit day, and it was actually absolutely hysterical as to why. Now, this was a huge slap in the face. Obviously, nobody likes getting slapped in the face, but how about a roundhouse kick to the temple? Because that's what Under Armour's new, quote-unquote, new CEO Kevin Plank felt yesterday. Basically, the company came out and announced that they were going to give the boot to Stephanie Lenartz, I believe her name is, as the current CEO. She's been in the position for less than one year, and they are putting Mr. Kevin Plank back in. Normally, this would be thought of as kind of a good sign, because Kevin Plank not only is the former CEO, he's the goddamn founder of Under Armour. But investors are not excited to have him back in the driver's seat. We'll see how it works out going forward. All right, finally, the fun story of the day, guys. We have... Feelings don't care about your facts. Nobody tell Ben Shapiro that I said that because I definitely don't want his, you know, whatever, whatever emotional problems that guy has. I definitely don't want him coming after me here, but we are feeling good. So that is absolutely for sure. We can see that in a lot of our sentiment readings. Now, we've been hearing a lot of chatter on markets from the goddamn peanut gallery as always that, oh my God, concentration is too high and tech stocks are doing too well. Yeah, they're doing too well because earnings are doing too well. There's a reason for it. And that is being reflected in investor sentiment. Not only in investor sentiment, but where these investors are actually starting to put their money, where their mouth is. So what we can see in a report from High Mount Research is that we have the most bulls since July of 2021, fewest bears since February of 2018, excuse me, and the highest bull bear spread since April of 2021. This is all a great sign. Investors are feeling good and we're feeling positive about the future. And it's not only survey data that's backing that up. We're seeing large trader call buying reach uh, all-time highs, quite honestly. So this is basically measuring the amount of large traders that are purchasing calls, call options for the uninitiated. It's a way to bet on a stock's price going up. We are seeing those peak as well. They're mooning just as much as overall equity indices. So that's definitely a great sign. All right, why should anybody care about this? Why do we care that we're feeling good? Now, it's the cool guy, contrarian viewpoint that, you know, markets are in a bubble and we're just one bad earnings report away from all of this falling apart. That is not what we're seeing whatsoever. If you go ahead and take a look at this other chart in the piece from Ed Yardeni and Yardeni Research, great research team to be watching as well over there, they're showing that pretty much every major U.S. index of stocks that uh, has been traded over the past couple of years since October of 2022 has moved higher since then. Now, that doesn't mean a whole lot. It's been a very different journey for a lot of these companies, but seeing that they've been able to rise throughout that period of time and so consistently across the board is obviously a fantastic sign. Large cap tech is, of course, leading the way, and they're leading the way because their earnings are leading the way. I mean, there is a justification for this. Sure, their valuation multiple might be expanding as well, but maybe it's deserved because they lead and they've been leading for so long and because of such high gross margin businesses that, Jesus Christ, I'm going to run out of breath here. Oh my God. There is reason justifying this rally. Plus, if we go ahead and scroll lower, the somewhat concerning or the only thing that kind of pulls in another direction is that not this isn't entirely fundamentally based. So we are seeing the weight of high momentum stocks in the U.S. markets at an all time high as well. Momentum, obviously, these are stocks that uh, you can define momentum in different ways. Generally, it's going to be like stocks that over the past couple of weeks have moved from their 10 week high to their 20 week high past their 30 week high or whatever time period you want to impose on that. We are seeing momentum stocks at their highest point in 100 years. They're all-time high right now. So you could take that as a contrarian signal and say, oh, momentum is you know going too high. That means that we've got nowhere to go but lower. Now, we would take this in a more uh, kind of layered viewpoint and put it in context of the fundamental performance that we've been seeing. Strong momentum alone isn't a reason for markets to go down, especially when we're seeing this fundamental performance. Call me a permeable if you want to, but it seems like we're feeling pretty good right now. The only thing is that economic sentiment is starting to move lower among consumers. That's something we're definitely going to want to be aware of, but that's tough when, you know, you have gasoline prices rising 6.8% in a goddamn month. 
All right, that about does it for us here today. We do have a quote that I've already put in here from Mr. Ben Carlson, definitely a great person to check out. He writes a blog called A Wealth of Common Sense. And he's on one of the best investing podcasts out there. He said, if we're arguing about decimal points, we've already won the game. That was in context about a conversation around inflation and whether you know the CPI report being at 3.2% instead of 3.1% matters at all. He said that it absolutely doesn't. We'll see if that plans out to be true. All right, guys, that about does it for us here today. We don't really have much else to talk about, so let us know how you like the new format and everything else. Guys, leave us some comments. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you hate. Make fun of my mustache. I mean, you guys love to do that anyway, so I probably don't have to say anything there, but let us know what you like. Let us know what you hate. We want to be here to deliver for you, uh, and your comments and your likes and your subscriptions obviously help out with that, and they help me keep my job here as well. It was great seeing you guys later at night. It is now 7.37 p.m., Hope you guys all have a phenomenal day when you see this, when you wake up. The most important market podcast in the world. Happy investing, happy trading. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye now. And thanks to you, my listeners at Wall Street Oasis. If you have any suggestions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to send them my way. Patrick at wallstreetoasis.com. Until next time.